Hey guys, this is Pete with Crunch Time Coaching, and we have the Madrid Open this week, and some big news. Big news happening around the tennis world this week. We have Maria Sharapova, who's back on tour, and she is going to be playing Eugene Bouchard, which is a big grudge match, which I'm going to get to in a little bit on why that is. And then Djokovic recently uh, just decided to go it alone. He is no longer working with his lifelong coach, and he is going to go on the tour for uh, by himself for a little while and says that when he, if and when he does find another coach, there will be somebody with a high pedigree that can only really understand what, what he's gone through, meaning that he wants somebody who has – probably won some majors and would be one of the greatest players of all time. So that would be uh, pretty interesting to see who he finally settles on. And uh, so it, it's it's really cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through some of the quotes that uh, both these stories have made. And I definitely want your feedback, your comments on what you think. What does this mean going into really the heavy lifting of now the clay court season or really leading up to the French Open? How will these players react to all this? And um, you know, what do you think about it? Were these good moves or, or not so good moves by uh, these players and, and the coaching and the tour and things like that? So first, let's, let me share my screen with you. Uh, and we're going to go up to the Maria Sharapova story. Uh, again, you got to be patient with me as far as this sharing the screen. Not not the best at this, uh, but uh, let's go over here to Maria Sharapova. So I don't know if you know this about Eugenie Bouchard, but she is against the Maria Sharapova comeback. She doesn't think that it is fair that uh, that she's allowed to just kind of come back and business as usual, be right on the tour. Uh, she thinks it's it's not fair to the other players who work so hard week in and week out and you know what she feels that have done it the right way and they're fighting for a spot on the tour. And Maria Sharapova uh, doesn't qualify with her ranking to be in the main draw because she's been gone for so long. And she calls, if you see right here, this right here, she calls her a cheater and says she should be banned for life from the sport, not just not allowed into the main draws, but not even allowed to come back and play, which I think is pretty harsh. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's her opinion. And uh, Sharapova responds with, uh, it's not the way that she goes about about her job, that, that she's been the public eye since she's been a very young girl and she's heard a lot of things and it affects you, you on and off the court. And I think it'd be very, I think that be a very challenging position to be in. It's not the way I think. My tennis speaks for itself, and that's what I want to focus on. So she's basically saying, look, people can say what they want to say. There's lots of opinions out there, but I'm just going to go about my business and I'm going to play. I'm going to let my racket do the talking. People can say whatever they want to say about me, but I'm back and that's what I'm focused on. So, uh, what do you guys think about this? First of all, let's just go basically, who do you think is going to win this match? Do you think that uh, Bouchard is going to win? She's had a tough time. Uh, I really thought she was going to be easily top five for several years when she started to get hot under uh, Saviano's coaching a couple years back, but she's really fallen off. Maria has been struggling in her matches. She's winning, but not winning easy. Who's going to win this match? And uh, what do you think uh, about Bouchard's comments? Are they a little harsh? Do you think that Maria should be banned for life? Uh, should she be allowed to come back but have to go through all the satellite tour and things like that? Or do you think that because of our all our accomplishments and obviously her name and what she can do for the sport and the interest level this is creating that the tour kind of needs her back, especially since now we have uh, – you know, the absent of Serena Williams, I think it's kind of saved the women's tour in a little bit as far as having a story to follow and get interested and get behind and be for it and be against it. I personally think it's good because, you know, this the, these events on the women's side probably wouldn't get much notoriety right now based off of we really don't have a dominant number one. We really don't have a big personality in the game. And Maria Sharapova is a big personality. And this is 
very controversial. So I think it's actually good for the game. I think that it's good that she is on the tour. It gives us something to talk about. And at the end of the day, that's really what it's about is, is, is you know, creating interest for the sport. And even maybe some people who are not into tennis are looking at this and they have their own opinions. So I vote yes. I think Maria should be allowed to be in the main draws. She served her time. She's been out for over a year. And, you know, she she is somebody that people will follow and watch and, and get eyeballs on our sport that we love. And I think she should be able to go into the French Open and go into Wimbledon. That's just my opinion. It doesn't mean it's right. I want to know what you guys think. Let me know. Uh, should she be allowed to play on the tour? Okay, next we're going to go to Novak Djokovic. And this was kind of a bombshell because Marion Vida, who's been uh, – coaching him basically since he's he's been a kid i mean they've been together a long time and they are like family and djokovic obviously he's been having a tough year not happy with his performance uh but but just cuts off you know lifelong coaches uh like that and i i i'm surprised by this i i didn't see this one coming guys did you guys see this one coming now the good thing is is it does look like they parted on uh, peaceful terms. He says that that he is forever grateful to his decade uh, friendship and 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 professionalism and commitment to his career goals. Without their support, uh, they they wouldn't have had these professional heights. And and he's he knows that that his coaches have completely because he also um, fired his physical coach as well, his physical trainer. And he said that he knows that these two gentlemen have dedicated their life and they've been the driving force to, to everything he's done but he felt he needed a change and he's proud of their their relationship and their unbreakable bond that they've built throughout the years mutual love and respect and understanding they are family and that will never change so really classy stuff i, I find these quotes really really inspiring and then and then vita says um Time spent with Novak feels like a whole lifetime. We were part of many uh, incredible achievements. We were living and breathing for his dreams. Uh, gave everything he could as a coach and very proud of the results. We arrived at this point where we all realized that we need new energy in the team. Novak can do so much more, and I'm sure he will. So totally class statement. Uh, no animosity. Wanting the best for Novak. And uh, Novak embracing the new challenge, saying he wants to continue raising his game, uh, his stamina, and this is a continuous process. He enjoys this journey. It feels like he's starting something new, and he loves this challenge. Just a great kind of life lesson for all of us out there. And here's kind of the coolest quote, I think, of the whole thing. It goes, I am a hunter, and my biggest goal is to find that winning spark on the court again. So I think that this is... Um, very encouraging if you're a Novak fan because uh, you you probably like me have been wondering you know how hungry is Novak anymore is, is he kind of satisfied with all his achievements uh, I think kind of family issues were getting in the way to where it was like okay Novak you got a kid and wife and you know can you really train this hard anymore uh, but it looks like he is really ready to rededicate himself and and willing to do whatever it takes to find how to get back to his you know high high bar that he set for himself and uh, the question is can he do it with uh, new new team people now when he brought boris becker in that that helped he, he kept the, his old team around but boris uh kind of took the lead and that that did make a big difference so uh what do you guys think is this a good sign or is this kind of a, a sign of desperation from novak and and uh it's not going to work. It's going to backfire because he doesn't have those familiar faces in his box. Uh, I want to know what you guys think. So what are your picks for the French Open? You know, is, is, is Novak going to repeat? Is this going to be kind of um, sparking everything just in time for, for the French? Or is it something that's going to take a while for him to work out and maybe he'll never get back? To that dominant. I mean, it, he was just so dominant these last couple of years. And uh, you know, how will Maria do in this comeback? Do you see her possibly now that uh, 
um, Serena Williams is out, can Maria actually become the number one player in the world? You know, it's, I think it's a big if, if and when Serena can come back after having a child and, and, and where will her, her motivation is. Right now, she says that she wants to come back. I saw an interview. But, you know, once you have, have a kid, it might change. She might go, well, I thought I wanted to come back, but, you know, I want to stay home and, and be a mom for a while. And, and she's done so much for the game. So that could leave a, a window of opportunity for Maria in that she knows how to win. She knows how to be a champion. And there's really no one else around right now. I got a phone call. Sorry, I'm going to turn that down. There's really no lady around right now that really looks like they uh, have that you know, like they're ready to take take the reins and become number one and, and dominate. So let me know what you think. These are all great topics. Uh, it's always kind of cool how the tour reinvents itself and comes up with new stories. I, I thought that they, the women's tour might be a little boring for a while when Serena left, and, and this is uh, very interesting to talk about, I think. And uh, if you like this video, like it. Uh, comment for sure. I want to know your uh, opinions on all this and subscribe if you like listening to stories about the pro tour and also if you like learning about tennis because I, I, my name is Pete. I'm an online tennis instructor and I have videos on the serve, on the forehand, on the backhand, doubles play, singles play, mental play. Uh, so anyway, that's it. Hopefully you enjoy this conversation and look forward to reading everybody's comments.